November 1976, at the age of 20, Rhoda Taylor was charged by the police by damaging a chair by fire, value of six pounds, in a locked ward of the mental hospital where she was a patient. She was remanded in custody to Holloway Prison for a period of three months. She was subsequently tried at Canterbury Crown Court, and in the following February, she was sent to Broadmoor, from where she may not be discharged or transferred elsewhere without the permission of the Home Secretary. Find me, and have me as your beloved. Find me. Find me. Find me. Find me. <laughs> All right, Verity, move out of the way now. I want to take a picture of Mummy and the boys. No, no, I want the movies. I want oh. the movies. I want to go, Dad. Take my Verity. picture. Get out of the way, Verity. Verity. It's not fair. Get out of the way. You're acting like you're six instead of 16. I just move. No, no, take some of me, Dad. All right, Verity, let Nicholas and Mark have a turn. I want to take a picture of the whole family. Verity, stop being so silly and do what all right, Verity, you've had your turn. Verity, get out of the way! It isn't fair! Verity, stop being so silly, you do what Daddy says. Be a good girl, Verity. Be a good girl! No! I think it's a great pity about my sister's illness. I hardly ever see her nowadays. I might even say I hardly knew her. She was sent away as an inpatient when I was only a few months old. It was last year when I was ten. She was sent to Broadmoor, which was brought on by an incident in the mental hospital. She was always very kind to me, though. And when I think of it, I think upon this as a tragedy about my sister's illness. And when I'm alone, I sometimes can't stop myself from crying. Find me, find me. Of her ability <laughs> and has made progress. <laughs> However, 
She is still unreliable in social behaviours outside the classroom, in lunch hours, etc. But has been very helpful as an early morning monitor. <laughs> I never seem to get here on time. I'm always early. I said Robert's more than school that he plays. Me too. I brought Verity's with me. She insisted on wearing our parents. Oh, this they daft children. Yes. Hello, you oh, well. Rotten old day, isn't it? Rotten. I wouldn't let me soak the walls up for you, Jean. Thank you. I'd expect the letters wait inside for you. Oh, I don't know so much. The headmistress is that fussy. Isn't it silly? I'm just as scared of headmistresses as when I was at school myself. Oh, the headmistress and police. No. <laughs> Nativity played oh, lovely this year. No teacher, Miss White, she's ever so clever with the costumes. And didn't they sing beautifully? Oh, Michelle was an angel. <laughs> Some angel. <laughs> was yours in it this year? No, no she wasn't very well. Oh, so much blue about. Such a shame.
for our visitors. Now remember, the swimming gala starts at 2 o'clock sharp. All those taking part must report to me at 10 minutes to 2 in your bathing costumes in the changing room. And remember what I told you. Any child not being in a swimming cap will not be allowed to swim in the gala. Don't forget. Does anyone want to read that paragraph about swimming? I you I don't want to see me! I love swimming. I'm happy swimming. I'm free. I'm the best in my class. You said so. She said, Verity, you're the best in the class. I'm the best in the school. I'm the best in the whole entire England, the whole entire world, the whole entire universe! You're safe in the water. Safe as safe. When I grow up, I'm going to be an Olympic champion, very to Taylor, gold medalist. I'm going to win all the prizes, and everyone will be clapping and cheering, and all the little children will be asking for their autographs. I'm going to meet the Queen, and she'll give me my gold medal and the water will be shining on her crown and on my gold medal and she'll shake my hand and she'll love me. Everyone will love me. One day I'm going to swim the English Tunnel. On and on and on. I'll go until I get to France. I won't be scared and I'll be brave of the waves, all, all the sharks. And Dad will be in the boat beside me and he'll say, come on Verity, you can do it. And I will. And I'll go on and on and on. Five 
months. Has Verity been admitted into a mental hospital before? No. May I see your doctor's letter? Edward, this place is our last chance. I think we did admit Verity into a mental hospital. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye. We'll come oh. and see you soon. Dad! You can't leave me here! No! <laughs> I don't know you. She can go, but we've tried, we've tried so hard. Are you sure you have? You don't understand. These last two years have been a torment. She's been back to the children's ward at the hospital twice. Why won't they take her again? Well, well, sir, can you continue investigating all the possibilities, Mrs. Taylor? But I must warn you, there aren't many facilities for a case like this. We don't have places or the staff. We all think you and your husband are managing.
going to do? Manage! Perhaps it'd be better for all of us if we couldn't manage. And they'd have to do something. Maybe if I became an alcoholic. God. I could. I think I could sometimes. Some nights I go around to Suzanne's and we get a little bit tight together on the whiskey and we just talk about all sorts of things and we laugh and for a while I forget. The thoughts stop going round and round in my head. The relief of feeling just like an ordinary person. I'm supposing when Miss Everett from social services came round today and she found me dead drunk on the floor. Dear me, Mrs. Taylor, you're not managing wonderfully well today, are you? Imagine your, your own child driving you to drink. Your own child that you love. I don't even know if I do love them. I don't know what I do. Pity them. Pity them. Pity for Verity. Why did it have to happen to her? Why did it happen to happen to my Verity? But fear too. She seems to like to frost me. Enjoys it. And she never does it to Edward. Oh. I really do think sometimes that she hates me. But, but he's so good to her, so patient and kind. All those holidays he takes her on, he doesn't talk much about them afterwards, but I know. I know that she crucifies him. And I feel mean and cowardly because I don't go to him. I'm guilty. Did I do it? Was it, was it me? All those, all those weeks, all those months when she was inside of me, I thought she was safe! And all this time, did I, did I contaminate? Oh. She once again to request your help with our acute problems concerning our daughter. It is no exaggeration to say that my wife is quite at the end of her tether. After years of trying to give this girl the opportunity of a happy home, I really fear for my wife's health if the situation continues. <clears throat> Dear Mr. Taylor, we sympathise with your predicament for your daughter, but unfortunately in our area there are no spaces for disturbed teenagers and young adults. And an application has been made on to you for half of our daughter in your, for a place at your residential unit. I'm only writing to underline the urgency of the situation. Our youngest son, who is only four, has been suffering acute mental distress in recent months, manifested by lack of appetite, sleeplessness and bedwetting. The headmistress of the nurse school that he attends has also offered to dispose to the effect that his present home situation is having a severe effect on I'm sorry to say that as we run the only adolescent unit within a very large area, we are inundated with requests and have no vacant places at present. We will, however, put your daughter's name on our waiting list. I understand the reason why the councils cannot consider readmitting their aid into care, but I'm only writing to ask if there's not some sort of safety net provided by the council for cases of this sort. Although I do ask you to accept that we all sympathise with you in the present situation regarding Verity. However, there is really nothing that we as the borough directorate can do, or even advise you to do. <coughs> nothing. I'm leaving. And I'm taking Nikki with me.
Dear Mr. Taylor, I'm sorry that Verity continues to be a disappointment to us all. After this last escapade, I've been obliged to place in D2, a chronic ward for geriatrics. I'm not happy about this arrangement. There is no other suitable accommodation for her in this hospital. I'm afraid we are really at our wit's end to know how to help Verity now. <laughs> Secretary. Okay. 